Yeah. Let's take a bath. Uh, you can take a bath in just a few minutes, but first we have to make a video because we're celebrating half a million subs. What are subs? <laughs> Subscribers, the people who watch our YouTube channel. Oh. Okay, can we say thanks for half a million subs? Thanks for half a million subs. You know these people who are watching us on YouTube, Ben? Hmm. They have watched you grow up. They've been watching you since you would come up and say, Hey, will you roll my leaves up? You were such a cute little guy. You're still a cute little guy. You've been watching me. <laughs> You've been watching me. <laughs> hey guys, come here. Hey y'all. Hey, <laughs> Security, they've been watching me grow up. <laughs> so we went over a pretty big milestone today on YouTube. You ready? Yeah. Half a million subscribers. Oh! Are we getting like a golden? <laughs> are we getting like a golden play button? No, that's not for another no, half a million. Dang no. <laughs> it! It's like, there, it's like moment. <laughs> Are we getting a play button? All right, so could y'all join me in telling our subscribers thank you? Thank you. Thank you, thank you for joining us. We're so thankful for you. Y'all are like, hey, that's cool. Half a million subs. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty good, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's really I good. I literally asked you about it the other day. I can't think of anything else I have half a million of. Sure. Half a million dollars! I do not have half a million dollars. What, you don't? No. Um, well, you said you didn't have anything else that was half a million. Oh, you right. have half a million seeds easily. If you count beans. I don't think I have half a million seeds. If you count the bulk dry beans we have in our pantry? <laughs> Maybe. If you get into the bulk dry beans. Wait, what about those bags of elderberries? We counted out 100 for Ben's school, and that was like. Benjamin had his hundredth day of school and he had to take a hundred of something and, I chose? and so he chose and he chose a hundred elderberries and we counted it out and it was like a teaspoon of elderberries i was like wow so i probably do have half a million elderberries there you go. i have as many elderberries as half I have a million grains of sugar <laughs> oh, okay we probably have half a million granules of ground garlic <laughs> see we are wealthy in half a million things. Half a million things. of that. Salt. Salt. Yeah. Half a million of this. Flour. Yeah, yeah this. well. Half a million of that. Well, I would say that our most precious half a million is, is these guys. The, subs, the subs. The subs. And then the most precious half a million is that. <laughs> the sugar. You think the, the sugar is more precious than the subs? <laughs> so, as a little recap, I figured maybe we could tell a little bit about kind of our time here on YouTube. Does that sound good? Cool. Uh, so some of you, if you've been here for a while, you've probably heard us talk about this, but we actually attempted to start doing YouTube twice. That's true. Once we started, we had a friend that came to us. His name was Jake, is Jake. Um, Jake from State Farm. He, he's still around. And uh, he was like, hey, let's start doing this. And he actually showed me Justin Rhodes' channel. That's true. And it was around the time Justin, I think he probably had about 70,000 subscribers. I think this is probably about 2015. Mm -hmm. And he encouraged us to get started. We were going to kind of do a collaborative effort. So we made a handful of videos. So if you go way, way back, our first few videos on our channel were under the name Homesteads of Billy Goat Mountain. That is true. Because the area we lived in was called, it was called Billy Goat Mountain. And um, we were working with some friends, but they all ended really up. some really cool banjo music. Yeah, that <laughs> was way back. A red barn that didn't belong to us that we yeah. shot footage of yep. that they eventually tore down. Yeah, and uh, all the friends we were working with ended up moving off and That's not true. living nearby. Um, and so we did a handful of videos and stopped. And then in 2017, again, picked it back up. And I was like, oh, I really like to do this. And did a handful of videos. That was really before you were on board. That's true. You were just kind of like, yeah, sure, do what you want. But you weren't really about that. I was appeasing you. Yeah, more or less. And so I did a handful of videos. But I had, like, Ben was two. Yeah. He was about two. And... Yeah, 17 would have yeah. been that or going on to. I was doing full-time ministry. Like, I was traveling a lot. Mm. And... It was just a lot. It was a really busy time. You were doing the lawn care business. Mm -hmm. And so we ended up kind of letting it peter out. 
I remember when I came back in 2018, I published some of the videos I had shot a year before and not pub and not edited and published. I actually didn't know that. Yeah, I did that. Um, so yeah, then we came back in 2018. We were just really in a really strapped financial place. We were really weighing out whether we were going to keep going. Yeah, I think, I think it has more to do with than the financial struggle. It was my focus and efforts were going towards this business and it was not going towards the farm and really we needed to be doing it together for it to succeed. So like your attention was split between ministry and the farm, my attention was split between this business and the farm and then we also had our family on top of that. And so what it really came down to is you came to me and said, I'm okay moving back into town. Yeah, I remember I actually woke up and I'd had I'd had this dream and that made me think about this and I remember waking up and telling you, Hey, I'm okay. Like, because he was stretched so thin. And I remember saying, I know this is my dream, but if if it's not the right season for us to do this, if we can't actually do it well, let's just move back into town. I was like, I'll have Who's a little garden, have, have a few, a few chickens. chickens. I was like, we can just go back. And it was a devastating thought to imagine doing that for me. But it was kind of one of those things where I could see that you were like, you were kind of cracking under the pressure. You really were. Of trying to like financially make everything work. And yeah. not feeling like you were doing, like you were working so hard and then seeing stuff fall through the cracks. Yeah. It was really, it was a really rough was time. shutting down. And he was so shut down from so much stress. Hmm. And I remember saying that to you. And I remember saying, we were laying in bed. And I was like, don't answer me right now. I was like, really weigh this out. Mm -hmm. Because I, I'll support it. I'll go and I'll be okay if we have to give this up for now. And I was wearing my body out. Right. Because, because... I mean, I'm talking 12, 14 hour days. Oh, I know. And he was having a lot of issues. He sh Because of his disability, he should not have been pushing himself like that. And I'm it was pretty sure doing the lawn care business the way that it was is what started the blood swelling clots and, stuff. and stuff in yeah. my leg. Yeah, for sure. No, I mean, that was when that started. And honestly, you're still dealing with some of the repercussions of pushing that beyond where you should have. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it was just a really hard time. And I remember saying, hey, let's count the cost here. Are we actually going to do this? Mm -hmm. And you came back to me and you said, no, I know that God said for us to do this farm. Like, I know that this is where we were led. This was for a purpose. It's going to work out. And I was on the back porch. And actually, I decided to close the lawn care business. Yeah. At that point. Yeah. And this is before you had come in and said right. that you were going to do this for real. And he, and he, like, so essentially that was just like, well, I don't know how we're going to get through it. Yeah. I gave but, up your contracts and, you know, mm -hmm. like sold them all and, and basically sold this business. And then I was on the back porch shortly after that journaling and praying. And I just remember like really struggling with a lot of condemnation for feeling like a failure. You know, struggling with the fact that it was a dream. We had started it. It wasn't going well. Yeah. And it was like. You so desperately wanted it to go well. Yeah, and so I was on the back porch praying. I was writing in my journal, and that was the struggle. And it was this point of like, what do I do? And like this feeling of how can I have the solution? And I really remember just this moment. And it was like a really pivotal moment for me. You know, I have these moments where you're in prayer, and like you have these moments of like, I mean, I call them like marking moments or pivotal moments where you just know in your knower that like God is talking to you. Like, and, it, and I had this moment that I realized like, I'm not going to get us out of this mess. Like, all I can do is the next right thing that's in front of me. All I can do is the next thing that he leads me to do. But ultimately, our, us getting out of this mess is, is not in my hands. It's in his and that scripture came to me like, you release me from the Fowler's snare. And that, that just like hit me like a ton of bricks. And I remember having this, this, I, you know, a vision or whatever you call it. Like just this, this image and this idea coming to my head. And I saw this, uh, this video for a 
YouTube channel intro. And I actually made this video later. We made this entrance just as I had seen now, it. It's it. Yeah, I actually just recently put it back. I had put a different video as our as our entry, but like I put it back on there. And I'll, I'll link it down below. But it was I had this image of like these different shots and I these words that were over it. And I got up and I went next door. I was with my mom. You were with your mom is when she was still alive. And I went in and I said, I'm going to do YouTube like it's my job and, and God's going to use that to fund our vision. You were way more passionate in the moment. Sometimes I am. <laughs> so I, like, to really paint the feel of what it was like. I don't think it was me that Me and my dramatic. mom were at a table. I'm going to paint the feel. I'm the one who felt it. <laughs> I'm at the table with my mom. We're just enjoying a small, you know, chill chat about stuff. You know, nothing's real tense. And it's like a, imagine like a saloon almost. You, and like the door, you know, like those swinging doors. I when know. You described this on Wilder Show. So you like, did imagine not like those, those doors, like it's like the doors kicked open and Jessica came in. Cling, cling, cling. Oh, are there spurs now? Oh, yeah. Spurs. <laughs> it's like, I'm going to do YouTube like it's my job. And it's going to get us out of this hole. <laughs> She walked out into, I the, can't believe into this, the sunset. You know, the last time you described this, I slammed the door down and like, as if I were rolling out a plan. You just keep painting this picture. I know, but I'm a good storyteller. I was These intense. stories aren't necessarily I, accurate. But I was intense. Stories. I was very driven. I did go bust in the house and say, I'm going to do this. And then turned around and walked out. Right. Bling, bling. <laughs> yeah. Now, if we had had a horse at that time, you would have gone on your horse and... Probably so. Right. so. So not that dramatic, but it felt like I really was kind of stunned. I, I mean, I, I think just you there. I mean, I believed you, but I'm just like, I was just looking at my mom. My mom's looking at me. We're just like, oh, okay, all right. Well, here we are. <laughs> I mean, that's a little validating. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> I mean, it's almost like Babe Ruth pointing where the home run's going to go. <laughs> And you're like, is he really going to do it? <laughs> okay. There it goes. So, this has been an extremely beautiful journey. You know, I, I feel like we're in the midst of it. I, over the course of the last handful of years, it's interesting because at the beginning of this, we had these big dreams. Like I used to imagine this, like this place, this learning center and, and people coming and this farm to table restaurant, like all of these factors. And I look at it now and I'm like, man, I had these big old dreams when I had like no business, as people would say, like thinking that way. And True. that's why I'm always asking. That's why I'm always telling people, hey, your dream's not big enough. Because like, I think that you can look at a person who, oh, well, they have half a million YouTube subscribers. Of course they can dream like that. Like if, like we are so normal, like. And we were dreaming like that. Even before we had this. Right. I mean, and so it's not the YouTube subscribers. It's not the platform that makes our dreams valid. It's really not. We're believable. Because we had them before. Yeah, it's not that they're not believable because of that. Now they're easier to see the fruition of them. It's like, oh, yeah, well, that sounds, you know, like you'll probably do that. But, like, we were thinking like that before. We were thinking like that whenever we were saying, honestly, here's what's crazy to remember for me. All those massive dreams, and even now, I mean, like, there are moments now, like, the red barn and, like, the cow waiting for the cow to calve and these little things that I literally, I feel just dumbfounded sometimes. I'm just sitting here going, like, this is, this is real. This is real life. It is. But it's, it's crazy to think of that, all those dreams were burning in my heart the day that I said, hey, if we need to move back to town, we can. And I. I remember that. I remember that was a real moment of sur surrender for me because it was like, we can, and those things will still happen. They might be five years later, but the most important thing right now is us being in a place of emotional health and physical health and spiritual health that we're prioritizing the wholeness of our family and our relationships over any dream that we might go after. Mm. Because that was really what that surrender was. Hey, your your well being is more important than making this happen, and um, yeah, so very humbling. That's a little insight. 
we actually did not plan on doing that. We were just going to turn on this and say, hey, thank you guys. But that's how it is sometimes. It's better to, it's better to tell a story. Yeah. So, <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> well, we can tell them that we're going to offer a big sale. Yes. So, one of the things that we, we talked about. So, today, we were both having a pretty busy day with appointments and um, different errands and stuff. And I called him and said, hey, are you in town? And we met up and had just an impromptu lunch date. And um, while I was there, we realized that we had rolled over 500,000 subscribers. So we did a really nerdy thing at the booth. Congratulations. Shook hands. Congratulations. Good job, <laughs> Good job partner. <laughs> and uh, we were talking about it this evening. I was like, what can we do? I just want to say thank you. So, so we are going to do a big 24 hour flash sale, everything in our sticker shop. And there's still some like Clyde's garden planners. Anything and that's available in our shop. There's still, I don't know how many, but there are some grab bags, which it's already seven stickers for $10. So that'll be, everything's to be half off. So 500 K is the code for 24 hours. So this will end tomorrow uh, night. Spelled out link. Yeah, 500 K. We'll put it down below, a link down mm -hmm. below. 50% off flash sale for 24 hours, just as a thank you uh, to you guys. Thank you so much. Um, I I try to express it. I can't. Um, but I do hope that you know uh, how very grateful we are for you, for your encouragement, for your prayers, for the stories that you share with us, the advice you share with us. I, I always say this. You guys have made me a better gardener. You've made me a better mom. Um, you've made me more creative and been the greatest cheerleaders that a girl could ask for. I just am so immensely thankful for you. I wish I could thank you all individually. Obviously I can't. I do pray for you all. And, um, it is, it is one of the greatest honors of my life. I don't know if you feel this way, but it is one of the greatest honors of my life to get to do this. Yeah. Yeah, it, it truly is. It's extraordinary. So we wanted to just personally thank you guys, involve our children in thanking you, and tell you that we're going to do that flash sale is just a little way of saying thanks. Okay. We, we bless you guys. Until next time.